What's up, guys? Ninja Four Eagle here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to chain rare Pokemon and how to chain them fast in Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. So, a common problem that I see people who are chaining have is that once they get to rarer Pokemon, such as the starters or such as Chansey or any other rare Pokemon in the game, is that they'll just struggle be at first because it's much harder to chain rare Pokemon, of course, because they break out of their ball. So you might have like a 9 chain, and next thing you know, the Pokemon breaks out and it flees from battle, and you're back at zero just like that. So hopefully once you watch this guide, you'll be able to see that it's much more easier than you think it is, and that if you just follow these simple tips, then it'll be much more easier, and you'll have an easier time chaining rare Pokemon in this game. Okay, so first of all, you're going to want to make sure you have plenty of lures because obviously you need lures to make more Pokemon appear. The more Pokemon that appear, then the higher chance that a rare one will appear. And um, second of all, you want, of course, Pokeballs to capture the Pokemon. Um, you probably want more Ultra Balls, of course, because they're rare, so you want to get that capture rate down. And of course, berries would also help too, but they're not really necessary. But they would help, of course, because they'll also lower the capture rate. Um, and if you don't have the money for... Th to afford this many, then what you would probably want to do or what worked best for me was to just challenge a bunch of strong trainers um, repeatedly using a strong Pokemon and just do that for a while, beat the Elite Four a couple of times or rebattle a couple of gym leaders or battle red, green, or blue and you'll get plenty of money fast and that'll get you to where you need to so you have enough balls and enough lures to be able to chain efficiently. Okay, now that you're all stocked up on the items that you need for chaining, now comes the actual fun part, which is chaining the Pokemon that you're looking for. So for this guide, I'm going to be looking for Charmander, and you can find Charmander in Rock Tunnel, and as you can see, I'm at the entrance to Rock Tunnel. So uh, yeah, let's move on to the next step in this process. So now that you're in the place where you want to capture your rare Pokemon, now comes of course the part where you actually have to chain them. And there can be an extra step though, depending on what Pokemon you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for a Porygon, which is really rare, then I recommend take, taking this extra step, which is to chain more common Pokemon, such as in Rock Tunnel, it would be Geodude. Because once you get a common chain up to about 11, then you get the, a higher chance of more rare Pokemon appearing. So then that Porygon that you're looking for will appear, and you can start off your chain right there, without having to worry about waiting forever for one to appear. Now of course that's not necessary because there's always a chance that a Porygon could appear anyway, or in this case a Charmander. But it's just an extra step if you want to get all that BS out of the way and not have to worry about, you know, the random encounter not showing up for like an hour or so and next thing you know you're waiting forever for just one of them to show up. So either way, you can decide. You can either start off right off the bat chaining your rare Pokemon and hoping that it shows up, or you can just chain a common Pokemon up to 11 and that will increase the chances of them of a rare Pokemon appearing. And then you'll have an easier time because you'll be able to start off your chain right there because the chances of it appearing will be way higher than it was at first. So either way, both will work, but whatever works best for you, whatever you think works best, is up to you. Just in case there was any confusion on the previous step on what to do, here's an actual in-game example of what I was talking about. So of course, I gave the example of capturing common Pokemon like Geodude, and that's exactly what I did here. Um, as you can see, I've catch comboed 11 Geodude in a row. And up to this point, I have not seen any Charmander in Rock Tunnel. But now that I actually have caught in 11 straight Geodude, that should change because if you capture any Pokemon 11 straight times, then you should increase the chances of finding a rare Pokemon. Okay, so now that you have that 11 chain, then you should have no problem finding the rare Pokemon. As you can see, a Charmander just spawned in, and now you can begin your chain. So now comes the hard part, which is actually chaining the rare Pokemon up to 11. So now that you've gotten your rare Pokemon to appear, um, now you have to be really patient though, because now that I caught the Charmander, my Geodude chain has reset of course, and now I just have a 1 chain of Charmander which will mean that now it's going to be harder again for Charmander to appear. So this is probably the worst part of the whole entire process because you're going to be basically be waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for that rare Pokemon to spawn in and who knows how long it'll take depending on how lucky you are. But if you're patient enough and you just got to stick with it and 
once you get to 11, then the chances, of course, of that Pokemon appearing will increase again. And you'll just be able to keep farming whatever rare Pokemon you're looking for over and over and over again. So the key to this step, of course, is just patience. You got to keep waiting for that Pokemon to spawn in. Um, and the number you're aiming for is 11 because once you reach 11, like I said before, then they'll respawn faster than they are, of course, right now. So one thing that I recommend, though, is if you're farming Pokemon that are harder to catch is to actually run away from the battle even if it means that you're gonna waste more time if they break out maybe on their first two tries because if they break out on their first two tries then the chances of them running away will increase and if they run away then they'll break your whole chain and you'll have to start back at one and you don't want that you'd rather just keep your chain alive and just move on to the next one and that's why of course you want ultra balls because they increase the chances of them appearing and you want to use raspberries but yeah, that's my recommendation. That's what's worked for me is that if your first two captures do not work, then go ahead and just run away from the Pokemon because running away will not break your chain and it'll keep your chain alive and you'll just, you know, basically live to fight another day in this case. So when you're working to 11, just keep that in mind. Or even after 11, just make sure that you always keep in mind that if the Pokemon keeps breaking out, just run away from battle because the last thing you want is for it to flee and for all this to be for nothing. So... Just keep that in mind and then work your way up to 11. Okay, so just to show you how tedious this process can be, I've been at this for about 30 minutes. And I've only had 4 Charmander show up so far in 30 minutes. So it's a really, really, really tedious process. And you just gotta be patient, especially if you're having bad luck and not having Pokemon up here. Um, but yeah, patience is just the main advice I can give you. Um, especially when it comes to actually capturing the Pokemon. If it breaks out, you want to just run away from the battle because the last thing you want is to be like at a 7 or even a 30 chain once you get high up there. <laughs> and the last thing you want is for it to just break out and then reset your whole chain. Um, that'll waste so much time and all that effort will go to waste. So it's not really worth it once you get to a higher chain to just keep throwing Pokeballs and hoping that it catches it. You just want to, you know, live to fight another day as I said before. Um... And one more piece of advice that I can give you is if you're in a cave like I am, maybe just stay at one spot like right here where Pokemon will spawn all around you. And that'll keep all your lures from going to waste fast because if you're just walking around, it's going to go through your lures really fast. And you do not want to have all that money go down the drain unless you have a bunch of money saved up, of course, then you can afford that. But if you are if you do not have enough money and you want to save up, just stay in one spot and... Um, your lure will not go to waste as fast because you're not taking as many steps, of course, so... Just another piece of advice, and uh, yeah, hopefully down the stretch here we have more luck finding Charmander so that um, we can move on to the next step in the process. Okay, so finally at almost an hour in, we have found our 11th Charmander, and... Now that we found our 11th Charmander, things will be much more easier, and as you will see later on, they will spawn much quicker than they have before. Okay, so as you can see, once you reach 11 or higher, um, the Pokemon they're looking for should appear more often. In this case, Charmander now appears much faster than it did before, so all that tedious work is finally behind you. Of course, unless you're looking for a shiny, then you'll have much more tedious work ahead of you because you gotta just wait for a shiny to spawn. But um, yeah, other than that, um, all that can go wrong pretty much is if you lose the chain. So just always keep in mind that you, know, you don't want to lose the chain, you don't want to risk the Pokemon fleeing from battle. So um, yeah, that's it for this step. And the next step, honestly, would just be to get to a chain of 31. Because once you get to a chain of 31, you maximize your shiny chances and you also ensure that all the Pokemon that you capture, that you're looking for, of course, um, are at least, or at least have four stats that have max IVs. So I recommend just getting to 31. And then from there on, it's up to you if you want to keep going for candies or for IVs, or if you want to just keep searching for a shiny. So. That's the last step in this process, and to summarize, you just need to make sure you stock up on items, and of course you just need to have patience. Um, that's the whole key to the game is patience, you just gotta make sure that you have patience, that you're willing to flee from a Pokemon if necessary, and that you're willing to just keep staying on that route and keep chaining the Pokemon even if it's taking forever until you reach that 11 mark. And then once you reach that 11 mark, it'll much be much more easier to 
get to where you need to, and then you'll be done, hopefully, and you'll find what you're looking for. So that's the process that has worked the best for me when it comes to hunting Pokemon in this game. It might not be the most short process in the world, but it's been the most efficient for me. So hopefully you took something from this and learned something. And if you didn't, well at least hopefully you enjoyed the video at least, so... I just want to thank you for sticking around this long through the video. If you have any questions or concerns about it, um, just comment down below. Also, if you have any suggestions about any other videos I can make about this game, you can also comment that down below and I'll be sure to look at them and try and answer any questions or make any follow-up videos. And uh, I just want to thank you for sticking around of course again and have a great day and I'll see you next time.